Jesus are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your holy name, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you. Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us, you are sin. Let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord, when he comes to judge 
righteousness shall he judge the world. And then he equals with equity.
has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment. That you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
frequently holding back a bit, withholding something. And besides, you know, some people are just really unlovely. The people who have betrayed us, abandoned us, who have ignored us, purposely hurt us, or are just so different and so difficult, we find nothing appealing about them. Nevertheless, we know that every person bears the image and likeness of God, and we have promised to respect the dignity of every human being. Less obvious to us is how our lack of love affects our relationship with God. We behave as if God is largely absent from our lives. While we focus our attention inward on satisfying our desires, our private and personal joys. But we know what's expected of us. As John's Gospel tells us, God so loved the world that God gave his only Son so that all who believe in him might have eternal life. And you'll remember that at the Last Supper, and that's where our morning's Gospel comes from, this farewell discourse, Jesus gave a final commandment to his disciples, love one another as I have loved you, so that you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And again, as the Father has loved me, so I love you. And once more, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. All this would make us think that this love, which is called in Greek agape, and we use that term agape love, that that love is our aim, that it's our goal that we wish to achieve in keeping with Jesus' final commandment to his disciples. And yet, despite the emphasis on love, it seems that love is not itself our goal but is rather the means to a greater good. You might say it is the instrument to achieving God's ultimate desire that we experience Jesus' joy and the joy that the Son and the Father share and which we are invited to share. I'm convinced that this joy, the joy that Jesus wants for his followers, is more than happiness or exuberance, it's certainly not a happy, clappy feeling, it's more than a spark. In fact, I don't think that we even need to be happy in the conventional sense to feel his joy. For the joy of Jesus is better understood as calm delight, blessedness, it's grace-filled, it's a deep, abiding contentment. That joy which flows between Father and Son, and which flows from their unity to us, that calm delight and blessedness, persists in spite of pain and sorrow and trouble. Remember, Jesus was on his way to the Garden of Gethsemane, to his arrest and trial and execution, and yet he spoke of joy at the Last Supper, the disciples are about to lose their beloved teacher, their leader, the person on whom they have pinned their hopes. How could they be in any condition to receive the joy of Jesus? And yet, joy was present. Perhaps this joy is the aim of Jesus' entire earthly ministry, that through love all people will be drawn toward the blessed sense of calm delight, that is shared by the Father and the Son. If we accept Jesus' joy, and it grows to maturity in our hearts, it becomes complete as he wished, then we become his friends. We are no longer servants, standing by the door or confined to the kitchen or posted to the corners of the house, awaiting orders, not permitted to act of our own will, but only the master's will. We are no longer servants watching the householder, but we are friends, invited guests who experience 
the joy, the grace, and the gladness of the household. I think some of you have had this experience where you've been invited to a wedding or another celebration, an important birthday, and you are so warmly welcomed. You are caught up in the emotion of the event, and you feel like part of the family. Your host's joy is infectious. It fills the room, and it fills your heart. So, we love because he loved us first, and we hear and endeavor to follow his final command, love one another as I have loved you. Jesus invites his disciples to adopt the same pattern of love that exists between him and the Father. And it's not drudgery, because love is the path to joy. But the reason we are to love one another, merely for kindness, or compassion, or for the sake of peace and quiet. No, we love so that we too can experience the joy between Father and Son. But how would we know such joy if it came upon us? Or where should we seek it? What might that sort of joy feel like? You know, I'm no Pollyanna. I've had my share of troubles. And you are all practical, common sense people. Experience teaches us to be cautious, not to expect too much, be prepared for disappointment. We are so familiar with boredom and loneliness, anxiety, disillusionment, frustration, even a sense of grievance from time to time that just kind of makes its home inside us. And we can feel burdened by the demands that other people impose upon us, even the people we love and who need us and who we gladly accept the burden. In other words, not very often does something spark joy in our typical day. Deep peace and calm delight so often elude us. How do we attain to that joy? More steady flame than spark. It all comes back to this. It's through love. It comes back to love, the love of the Father, who made us his children by adoption. The love of the Son, who has called us his friends. And the love of the Holy Spirit, that sustains and sends us out rejoicing.
forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Senate Committee have something. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you. I watched the video of last Sunday's um, presentation, the service. It was wonderful. Thank you for doing that. Uh, Joan or Felicia or anyone else, if anyone would like to say something about June 16th? Yes. Um, sure. If you do, come forward. So Always that take a moment for an advertisement. Free advertisement. In order for you to be on camera, you need oh, to come up here. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary. I would have put my lipstick on. Um, yeah, just a reminder. First of all, thank you all who supported our events, including you, I'm Mother Megan. Um, I thought it was a wonderful event. Our speakers were happy. And I thank you all for opening your hearts and your conscience. Um, secondly, a reminder that we are doing what has now become our annual Juneteenth celebration. We did it last year. And we're doing it this year on Sunday. 20th. June 20th? 20th. June 20th. Not no, no. No, it's not. No. It's, well, I should get the date right, thanks. June 16th. June 16th. Oh, it's in here. Good. Good. June 16th. Um, please put a note, um, bring friends. It's going to be a family-oriented celebration. Um, Solana's devising a um, scavenger hunt based on um, black history and um, black inventions. And we're going to have lots of food. And some other things. So I know it's Father's Day that day, but um, you'll have plenty of time afterwards to celebrate your your father. So please put a note on your calendar to come bring your friends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to His name. Bring offerings and come into His courts.
but chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us, and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and to have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood, send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. 